CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and this course is going to give you an introduction to CSS and show you what it can do. Although you don't need any prior experience with CSS, it does help if you have some experience of HTML, because HTML and CSS work together. You can think of it as HTML being the code that creates the different elements on a page. So, for example, the code would, on this Google search page, create the logo, the search box, the buttons, and the various items up here as well. The CSS styles it. So, in other words, the CSS applies formatting, positioning, layouts. And we can see this as a demonstration very quickly and easily by using a plugin. Now, I'm using Google Chrome here, and I suggest you use Google Chrome as well because then we're all using the same browser and if you have problems then it's a lot easier to sort out if everybody's using the same. But also because Google Chrome comes with a couple of tools. The first one, when you're at a web page, if you press F12 on your keyboard in Google Chrome you get this tool that comes up down here and this is really useful and we will use it to have a look at some things during this course. The other thing I want to show you is the CSS plugin that I've got installed here. It's called Stylebot and you can get it from the Chrome Web Store as an extension. Now to get that, you just click on the menu button up here, go to Settings, and then select Extensions. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a link to get more extensions. You can see my Stylebot here is already installed, but you can just go get more extensions. Type in Stylebot and then install it. You can see I've already got it installed within mine. Okay, so let's just have a look and see what Starbot can do. And we're going to use the Google homepage as an example. Remember, the HTML defines the items on the page. The CSS defines the formatting and layout of the page. So we can play around with the formatting on Google by playing around with the CSS. And the Starbot allows us to do that. So let's just click on style uh, CSS, Starbot, and then open Starbot. And we end up with this panel on the right where we can start to make some changes. Now, as I move my mouse around the screen, you can see a box, a selection box, moves around the screen as well. So, if I click on something, let's say the Google logo, then any changes I make in this area here will affect the Google logo. So, for example, I could say, let's make the Google logo 500 pixels high by 1000 pixels wide. And that changes the look of the logo. I'm changing the CSS and I can have a look at the CSS at any time by clicking on this edit CSS button and you can see all I've done there is I've added some code to say make the height 500 and the width 1000 and it's changed it here in an ID called HP logo. Don't worry about IDs now but just at the moment we've changed the formatting that relates to HP logo the IDHP logo, which, ref which references the logo over there. Let's have a look see what else we can do. We can put a background colour in the logo area, if we wish. We can put a border around it. Let's have a, a dashed border, and we'll make the dashed border a nice colour. We can make the dashboard as thick as we like. With tools like Stylebot, it just allows us to play around with the CSS without actually affecting the real page. I mean, there's two things to learn here. Firstly, we can do an awful lot with style sheets. Secondly, I'm clearly not changing the Google that you're going to find if you go to google.com. I'm changing a local copy. So these changes here are just changing it on my machine so I can view the changes. And I can reset the page at any time with this reset button down here. And that will put everything back the way it was. The other thing we can do is we can add CSS. Rather than just making changes to these selections here, we can actually add CSS on the Edit CSS tab. Let's try something fun. I'm going to go back to the main screen for now. And I'm going to try to tile the background of Google with the Google image and we'll get rid of the Google image up here so it's not shown. So the first thing I need to do is I need to know what the URL is of this image. So if I press F12 to take me to the tools that come with Chrome, 
I can click the little magnifying glass and then go over the Google logo. And on the left side here is the code that adds that logo to the page. And on the right hand side is relevant CSS. But let's just concentrate on here for the moment. What I want is to copy this because it's got the URL section in there. So let me just bring in a notepad and I'm going to paste that in. And what I'm interested in is this bit because of that is the Google logo. We can check that by going to google.com, going to that URL. Let me open that in a new browser and we can see. There we go. So that's the URL of the Google logo. So we've got the URL. That's what I needed from there. Let's go and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little background color on the Google page. So what I did there, let me just reset the page so I can show you again. What I did there is I've selected the background area. I've got moved my mouse over. You can see the rec the selection box has disappeared. I'm not selecting the logo. I'm not selecting the space between the logo and the the um, entry box. I'm not selecting the entry box or the buttons. I'm selecting the background. So there we go. And I'm going to put in a little bit of a background color just so we can see what's going on. In fact, let's have it. Okay, just a touch. Right, I'm going to go to the Edit CSS now, and you can see that what the Stylebot plugin has done is to create some CSS, and it's bounded by these curly brackets, which we'll see more of as we go through this course. But for now, the only command there is background color and then this number, which represents this color. Let's go down. I'm going to put in background image and then URL open uh, normal parenthesis quote quote close parenthesis and then semicolon this is what I'm actually going to do here copy that URL and paste it in to the code and you can see now that the Google logo is now over the background so I can save that just to get rid of this Google logo that was there to begin with all I'm going to do is select the logo and then scroll down here and click on hide in the layout and visibility section. So we've got the Google logo now over the back of the search page. Something else we might like to play with are the buttons. So if I select the buttons and we can have a look and see what we want to do with those. We can change the font for example. Font size Okay, so I've changed the font size now and the buttons now look very different. Change the text color. Border style, do we want a border? The border color so we can see it. And we could even make the buttons bigger. We could hide them. That would confuse some people. And the height, let's put 150 by 300. Okay, so now we've just completely redesigned the Google page. All we've changed is the CSS that controls the layout. The items on the page are still there. We've, di we've taken out the logo with this particular bit of CSS, display none, and that relates to the HP logo ID, which just refers to the logo itself. And then we put in other CSS to modify the look of the buttons and the background. So hopefully from this introduction, you've seen that CSS is really powerful. You've also seen that there's some great tools that you can use, which you can play around with the CSS on existing websites, or you can use it to examine your own websites if you want to make changes because any of these changes I've got here, if Google was my site, I could go in and I could change the style sheets on my Google site, and this is what would happen. We'd actually get this layout on my site. So CSS is great for tweaking your own sites, finding things you want to change, testing them in something like Stylebot, and then going in and making the permanent changes in CSS, and we will see some of this in the course as well. 
but hopefully you've seen the relationship between the HTML and the CSS. HTML defines the items on the page and the CSS defines the layout, the formatting of those items on the page. And that's what we're going to look at in this course. We're going to start from the beginning and there will be a few technical terms but we're going to try and take it easy. And by the end of the course you're going to be fairly happy going in and changing and editing the CSS on your own sites or just simply going to another site and having fun like I have with the Google site. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction and I hope it gets you excited for the rest of the course. So let's get on with it.